Lucky Boys Podcast. Now, out of all the film projects you were part of, is there one that particularly stands out to you that that you just had an incredible time? Well, my last or film... Or just pro- extremely proud of? Well, um, there are many, uh, more than a few that I'm proud of, but the one that comes to mind is what my most recent one, which is The Paper Tigers. Uh, I was extremely proud of that uh, for many reasons. Uh, first of all, I had a dream one day years ago of somehow, this is after I've been in the, in the industry for a, a few years, I, I, my dream was how can we get into producing our own films as Asian Americans? Mm. I would love that was one of my one of my dreams is to work on an Asian American film with other Asian Americans uh, uh, on an Asian American story helmed by an Asian American director with Asian American actors in front of the camera and an Asian American crew behind the camera. That was my dream because I can see that out of all the disparate uh, people I meet over the years and you know, the Asian people over the years running into them on film sets why can't we one day come together come together yeah. and that was my dream and, and do something yeah and, and the paper tigers uh, was my dream come true uh, it was great it, it, it was written by an asian american about asian americans awesome and, awesome yeah uh, and and love it and it was uh funded uh through community kickstarter type uh, mm-hmm. means uh, and even the story behind it uh, when the director first wrote the script years ago and shopped it around Hollywood the response was very positive oh we love the story we love the script we will give you X number of dollars for this film is there a butt coming there is a butt coming there's, a, there's a big caveat every time mm-hmm. with Asians yeah. Asian Americans there's always a caveat and the caveat is but we want to make some of a couple of the at least one of the lead asian ca- characters white oh, and to surprise surprise and to his credit um bao tran and his producers said thanks but no thanks hey shout out to you bao tran and, your, and the producers on that paper uh, tiger and, yeah and we're gonna, shout out paper tigers. because they realize how much they're giving away if they give the give the whole you know boat away that way and they'll It'll, it'll be it won't be their film anymore it won't be that same story right uh, it'll be some the, whitewashed right and version. that goes back to what we were talking about earlier in our conversation was was when you um how do you manage the line between business and art right? well um one thing that decides it for you is that you're making a living too mm-hmm. uh and when you're being paid to do something you want to do something you love um uh, and that doing something you love, being involved in one area of the craft of filmmaking that you love, doesn't mean that it has to ha- involve Asians. It, 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 so I can navigate that difference. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and but in I, this sense, it, does, it did mean to st- staying true to the art by not allowing uh, for them to rewrite the story by putting a white hero mm-hmm. in the mix where it really just didn't belong in that sense. I mean, there's white heroes in every story and, and that's okay. Right. But in this sense, to, to just add one just for the sake of adding one, it, it's kind of ridiculous. Sure, we all thought so. Um, right. I, I think it's um, finding that balance in life that works for you between art and biz- commerce. Um, art will rarely pay your rent but com- the commerce part my salary in working in mm-hmm. other uh, venues uh, but, uh, in the same area mm-hmm. has paid my rent right. fine so how was the studios able to digest that information when they refused to I guess rewrite the script or uh, the character um, I don't think it was that difficult um, our um, director screenwriters and producers basically in their own way, said thanks, but no thanks. And so I don't think the studios Did, had any choice. <laughs> so they went with it anyway. They said, okay, yeah. we, we, we'll still support the project. 
No, the studios did not support the product because was, of that. Yeah, I yeah. mean, they, they shopped it around, saying, "Okay, uh, we have this film. We'd like to get it financed. We'd like to get it made. Anybody interested?" And that they were interested mm -hmm. with that caveat. And then there was, "Okay, I don't think that's going to work for us." You walk away. So they brought it to the people. They, the crown funded it. So the studio liked it. They just didn't like it for Asian Americans. I don't know what. That's what it the sounds like. Process. Yeah, I, I, it's I, like, hey, great script. No, I mean, from a from a business standpoint, put a chad, put a couple of chads in there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but from yeah, a, I love the script, but you know, add add a few chads. But but from yeah, a, from know. a business standpoint, I'm I'm just thinking from their standpoint, um, they're looking at the script and they probably want to bring in a, a a known actor, so that's why they would say like, oh, let's can you put in a white actor. Because we can probably attach someone who's an A list but or a celebrity. Had, that's a tired excuse because at, at this point, yeah. there's just countless examples where that just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And when you ruin the integrity of the film, it, it, it's just it's actually an embarrassment to everyone involved. Too. Oh, yeah. And a lot of the times, the directors look like jackasses. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they kind of put in a situation where they're like, oh, you know, between, again, art and business, mm -hmm. right? And, and, you know, a lot of times when you try to stay true to art, you may not get a chance to eat. Right, so I you do have to kind of just figure it. And it's a it's a tough way to navigate, but in this sense, it sounds like it worked out because now you got community involvement. You're, you're in a year 2021 where there's other forms to uh, of crowdfunding you can use yeah, rather than yeah, just that, a studio, and that's getting old. And that, yeah, know. and it's amazing that it was crowdfunded. It's a feature film, right? So, how much was the budget? What was raised? Uh, I think the uh, we ended up uh, with the budget. Of course, I never. I'm, I'm privy to the details of budget from because of what I do, but uh, uh, I think the film was uh, budgeted. Fine, the final amount of money we had was about one point two five, one point three million. Wow, for a feature film. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, uh, the community came out uh, in full support. Uh, we shot the whole thing in Seattle. Uh, it's a kung fu movie and being that Seattle was the home for Bruce Lee for years and so mm -hmm. forth. Oh, it was very beautiful. poignant for me and it was, I really was excited by that concept and and everybody was excited. It was totally be, uh, behind the film. Uh, we, uh, the, the, the neighborhood the restaurants would, 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 would cater for us and uh, um, the producers and director called on all their favors from all their friends. We got locations, we got... Oh, and that really helped a lot. It, How many jobs did that create in that community for Asian Americans, especially that may not have access to uh, the entertainment world? Yeah, I, I, I don't know how many jobs it created, but certainly, um, I, and I hope you guys see the film, is out. It opens this week, May 7th, theatrically. Is it a wide release? or It's a nationwide release. Wow. In New York, it's being released uh, theatrically at the Village Cinema, Cinema. East. Okay. Uh, and and if you look at, I hope you guys stay for the end credits. If you look at the credit, and you will see countless names, and they're all from the community. Uh, I don't know if they got, if everybody got compensated monetarily for it. I have a feeling many people didn't. It was just through their goodwill and their excitement about finally uh, supporting a film like this in the Seattle community about martial arts in the home of Bruce Lee. Yeah, can you give us a little bit, uh, I mean, since we're talking about Paper Tigers here and it releasing uh, just for people who have no idea what that is, can you kind of just give us a summary? Yeah, the, the, the summary is uh, a simple one. Um, it's about, uh, the Paper Tigers uh, is about three Kung Fu prodigies. It starts up with them as children under this Sifu. Mm -hmm. uh, I love kung fu movies, by the way. I'm such a nerd for it. Okay, yeah. then you have one you're going to go see. Uh, and basically, it starts up with um, these three pro kung fu prodigies when they were um, children. And their sifu is mysteriously murdered or mysteriously dies at some point. And these three young prodigies have drifted apart in the space of 25, 30 years. Ooh. Uh, and they are, have become middle-aged men with middle-aged responsibilities and problems. And they have not done their kung fu for a long time. And 
upon the news of the death of their Sifu, uh, they got together to find out what who, happened. What happened? To who did it? To investigate further. And so that's the, the the drift of the entire plot, which is very simple. But there are many layers to this. It's about friendship. It's about uh, past glory days and what happens thirty years later when all of us at some point will become middle age and past your prime. What what? How do you view yourself? How do you view each other? How does the world view you? And how do you uh, rise up to the challenges of this um, detective story of finding out who killed your Sifu 30 years after your, your, your prime? And that's what I pay attention to when I'm watching a film like this. Is like I'm, always watch, I'm always looking at the subtext mm -hmm. and trying to see what I can learn from it and, and extrapolate from. Like there's so much you can apply to your own life. Right. Well, that's the thing about um, stories on film. There's the obvious plot line that the film hangs on. Mm -hmm. But but within that story, there are many layers. And one of the, the layers of The Paper Tigers is about friendship, about aging, mm -hmm. about being a prodigy, about being a star at one time in your life and then having... And then like, losing that identity. And lo losing oh. that and oh uh, there's there's a line from the film where the sifu is teaching his students that kung fu without honor is just fighting hey mm. uh, so deep. there are there there are uh, ideas in the film i think that's what i feel like i think i saw this trailer everything you're saying like i feel like it's like three dudes one black guy yeah. uh, two yeah, asians yeah ron, I, I saw this ron trailer. is in it i think who? Ron? Ron? Yes, Yoon? Ron's in it. Yes. Okay. And, and yeah, Ron is great. I mean, all, all yeah, he's the, in a bunch of films. Yeah, the he's cast is great. Yeah. The, the cast has been great. I bet. Yeah. 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 Oh, man, I'm looking forward to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I, yeah. I could see why that would be one of your proudest achievements. Yeah, and, and I had such a great time in the film. We were working with an Asian crew and an Asian director. On so you didn't have to explain anything about being Asian? You just No, and, 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 and it was like such a different atmosphere. Uh, and I, I and I met so many great talented uh, people from the Seattle film community. Uh, it was just. Did it feel like a family? Yes, it did. Yeah. yeah.